Welcome to the Men of Iron Podcast, changing a culture one man at a time. At Men of Iron, we equip men and grow godly leaders through creating and sustaining one-to-one and micro-group mentorships. Go to menofiron.org for more info. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Men of Iron Podcast. What's up, world? It's Stephen Garrett live from the Men of Iron headquarters in Mannheim, PAG. What's going on? Not much, man. Just uh, living the dream one day at a time. And episode 21, the first episode in 2019. Is it too late in a year to say, too late in a month to say Happy New Year? Or no, Happy New Year, Steve. What's that cut off? I don't know. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good there for sure. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, G. Episode 21 is brought to you by Andrew L. Welk, Realtor with Coldwell Banker Residential Brokerage, licensed in both Pennsylvania and Maryland. Andy is the guy for your next go for your next home. Go to andywelk.com for the best service for buying or selling your home. Shout out, Andy Welk. Absolutely, He's man. a good friend of the podcast. And he's a good man and a uh, very generous man. We're, we're happy to know him. Well, we'd love to introduce our special guest today, Vince Miller. Vince is the founder of Resolute, helping to build better men with easy-to-use tools for the men of your church. Vince is a speaker and author of 13 books, including his latest, 30 Virtues That Build a Man. Residing in St. Paul, Minnesota, Vince is a husband and father of four. Vince, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. It's great to be here with you. What's going on? Oh, not much. It's cold here. Yeah. <laughs> Vince, I want to know, are you a Minnesota Gopher fan? or? Yeah. You know, I, I guess I have to be. I've lived here about 17 years now. I guess I kind of need to support local teams. So <laughs> unfortunately, yes, I'm going to support the Gophers. Sorry to hear that. I yeah, think, I know. If you're off around here. <laughs> I think when we think it's cold in Pennsylvania, it's probably like a warm day in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Don't even bother <laughs> talking about cold when it gets yeah. to like Wisconsin and Minnesota, North Dakota. Oh, man. Well, oh. Vince, Vince, thanks again for being on the show. We would love to just hear who is Vince Miller. Just tell our viewers and listeners uh, who Vince Miller is. Yeah, great. Well, uh, I grew up in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. I uh, lived there till I was about 20 or so. I uh, grew up in a home uh, that did not know Christ, actually. My dad was a pronounced atheist. Hmm. Uh, my mom was an agnostic, so I kind of had a real interesting childhood. Um, my parents uh, kind of gave up raising me. I moved in with my grandfather when I was a teenager, and he was a man of faith, and that's where I began my relationship with Christ, is in his home. And then uh, uh, went to a college out in Obama, and then went to grad school up in uh, Minnesota, because I had met this girl from Minnesota. That's how most people end up in this frozen state. And so uh, I ended up staying here uh, for most of the time. I have worked in ministry for about 26 years or so and love it and loved uh, the calling of being able to step in the lives of men and mentor them and see them grow in their faith. So that's the, the short and skinny on me. It's good stuff there. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're going to hit you with take five if you're ready for it, Vince. All right, I'm ready for it. All right. right. Question one for take five is what's one thing on your bucket list you have yet to do? One thing on my bucket list? Uh, I'd love to skydive for sure. I haven't done that yet. And uh, I haven't been uh, deep sea fishing or Mm. uh, deep sea diving yet. I've done some diving, but man, I'd like to explore the dark deep blue ocean because awesome. it scares the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> we can take a deep sea fishing. You just come over here to the east and there's some good deep sea okay. fishing down this way. So we'll, we can we can take care of that for you. All right. Yeah, awesome. I want to catch some big fish. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some monsters. Yep. Awesome. Question two for take five is who or what inspires you? Uh, you know, I'd have to say hands down, uh, probably one of the my, my uh, greatest inspirations is my grandfather, obviously. Uh, he's a big part of my story. Um, I'd say just simply because he did simple things to mentor me in my life. And I, I really live that out on a daily basis because of his influence. So I'd say he's my hero right there. That's awesome. Awesome. Question three for take five is what is one invaluable parenting lesson you can impart to our listeners? Oh, man, uh, I would say turn every available moment into a teachable moment. I have learned that parenting isn't just a a grouping of strategies or tactics or things you really read in a book. It's about being available each and every moment and pouring into your kids as you have time. And, and I take seriously that old Deuteronomy six passage that says, 
you know, teach as you walk, as you sit, as you lie down. I mean, seriously, just do it as you go. So oh, it's good stuff. It's awesome. Well, this is fitting because we see a football in the background there, right behind Vince's head. Is what's your yeah, favorite? That's Sorry. Andy Dalton right there, man. Wow. That's a signed Andy Dalton. Well, you might have just answered the question. What's your favorite sports team and why? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna. I have to go with San Francisco, man. Come on, <laughs> I grew up in the Bay. Grew area, up in the Bay so. Area. I grew up in the young days with Jerry Rice and guys like that. And so, I, I mean, those guys are legacy guys to me. So It's good stuff. Well, our VP of development, he's a Chicago Bears fan. And he said after the Eagles lost, he heard Vince Miller talking a lot of trash <laughs> on the Chicago Bears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right. Take five. Question number five. What's the best book you read in 2018? Uh, best book I read in 2018, uh, Contagious, and I forget her name, but it is a book about marketing and really what uh, creates a contagious product. Uh, I thought it was pretty fascinating. She has got this acronym called STEPS, and I just recently uh, dove in it into it again, and my daughter uh, spurred me on to read it again, and I, I just I think it's got some great principles in it on how to reach the world with a product that you may have. So it's good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you survived take five, Vince. Yeah, I did. That's well done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, you know, just kind of preparing for this podcast, just got to do a little background on yourself. And I know Garrett and yourself have had conversation over the last year. We just kind of diving more into your story. I know that you're, you know, you talk a lot about your father abandoning you at an early age. And just what were those adolescent years like for you growing up without a father? Yeah, you know, I I think that was probably one of the more mysterious times of my life when I was really uh, looking, uh, really trying to discover myself, uh, trying to see myself in light of my family, uh, trying to see myself in light of my own views, and, and I was it was pretty it was pretty difficult. Um, I I don't think that I had the childhood that some kids dream of, um, and I found myself lost at times, mm. uh, looking and seeking direction and it was hard to come by and really i'd say when my grandfather stepped into my life that was so significant to me because i had been through two dads at that point i had my biological dad who had left uh, my stepdad who had left hmm. and then my mom who had kind of given up on raising me when my grandfather stepped in that was perhaps one of the greatest and most significant moments of my life where i kind of felt love from a father for the first time, and I kind of felt mentored and poured into by someone ahead of me in life that I actually respected. And uh, uh, through his life, I witnessed Jesus Christ, and so hands down, he's the guy who really influenced me. And of course, it was crushing to me when I was 21 to watch him die of cancer. I mean, that was mm. that was actually personally devastating. Hmm. I remember I'd been through two dads, finally got my third dad. And then he dies of cancer, and it, it kind of left a big cavity in my life that was finally filled. But fortunately, I found that you know my heavenly Father is my first father, and uh, because of my grandfather's relationship with me, uh, it 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 uh, brought me through a lot of healing uh, for that need for acceptance and love and direction that I think a lot of men crave and want in life, but have a hard time articulating. Yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. Well, we know that mentorship played a huge role in the man you are today, you know, especially your grandfather. What lessons from your grandfather still still resonate today and you also use those lessons to pour into other other men through mentorships? Yeah, that, that's that's an awesome question. Um, you know, I'd say you're going to think this is over simple, but um, I think my grandfather just taught me simple things like he taught me what it meant to be polite, to have manners, to, he taught me how to shave, how to treat women. Uh, he, he taught me how to look people in the eye and be, be respectful. Uh, he taught me how to be generous and all those things. And of course he taught me the ways of God. Hmm. Uh, I don't take that for granted, but uh, he did this all through just spending time with me and, and simple kind of casual interaction, things like golfing on the golf course or teaching me how to drive or playing catch in the yard. Um, every one of those moments was critical, I think, for me and as an investment of time. And along the way, he had conversations with me. So there were so many that he had. I, I, I can't even tell you which one. I, I can tell you which one was probably the most valuable to me as a teen was teaching me how to drive. 
sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the independence that came from that, but, you know, was, was amazing. But there was also the, the proposition of having discussions with him in the truck when I'm learning how to, learning how to drive that impacted me forever. Mm. So. That's good stuff. That's yeah, awesome. That's good to look back and reflect, huh? Yeah, it's fun to, I think. I think sometimes we don't take the time to do that. It really, our, our past shapes our future, but doesn't determine it. Yeah, I've always, I've always found it interesting that um, I just recently went back to a, a college professor of mine, and um, I shared with him, you know, some of the lessons that I learned from him, not to be on the classroom. He really took a lot of time to, to mentor me outside the classroom, and I was like, hey, I, I learned this from you, and I learned this from you, and I learned this from you. And, and he was like kind of dumbfounded, but he was like, I, <laughs> I never knew that. You know, I was just meeting with you. And uh, it, it's always fun to go back and tell people, you know, what, what you've learned from them. And I would say if you're listening and you're watching and there's somebody in your life that's poured into you, man, take some time to go do that because that there is power in that. It's good for you, but it's, it's really good for the other person as well. So, Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's so right on because – you know, I had someone call me today that I hadn't spoken to ever, and they read a daily devotional for men that I write. Uh, and uh, they called me up and spoke with me and said, man, I got to tell you, I do this every week with your devotionals. I share them with my leadership team. I share them with my staff. And I was like, that's really <laughs> fascinating. You know, like, I didn't know the stuff that I was doing was having an impact on you. But, you know, sometimes we just don't know, and we don't know what we don't know until someone tells us, mm -hmm. right? And it kind of makes it exciting and worth the time. And so that really fueled me today to know that, hey, at least I got <laughs> one guy reading my daily devotion. <laughs> you got one You got one reader, Vince. You got one, at least one. <laughs> one raving fan. <laughs> hey, that's, that's all that matters. Our, our uh, you know, our thing right here in Men of Iron is one man at a time, so. Yeah, that's right. That's all it takes. <laughs> you never know what, 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 what one will one man will do with the impact that he can make. So, yeah, Vince, we'd love to hear just kind of the beginnings of Resolute. Why did you start it? Um, how has it changed over the years and kind of what you guys are up to today? Yeah, great questions. I'll, I'll try to do my best to answer all three quickly. But, you know, first off, I'm doing it because my wife made me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke, actually. I know it sounds kind of funny, but it's actually quite serious. <laughs> My wife came to me when I was uh, about 43, said, I, I think you should turn that small group experience into a ministry and monetize it. Hmm. And I said back to her, you're crazy. And she said, Vince Miller, I'm not crazy. She's a and lot Vince smarter said, than you. Yeah, she just <laughs> and he did this, though. This is the killer part. She said, and you're going to do it, and you better not fail. <laughs> <laughs> a good woman right there yeah that was on valentine's day by the way wow. <laughs> so so anyway you know i i felt the fear of god or the holy spirit or whatever it was that spoke to me and uh you know i took her up on it and you know we had three teenage children at the time and it was a daring proposition to kind of for, forego a regular common salary and then start a ministry but that's the reason i started started it and it you know it really began as um, kind of this idea of mentoring guys in small groups. And, you know, in the first nine months, uh, we discovered that men were like desperately craving something. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazing. I've, I've never experienced ministry growth like it, but we went from having nothing basically to nine months later, having almost 400 guys in 40 different groups. And uh, it, it blew my mind. Actually, I didn't think it was possible. And then and then what happened next was we, we made some small pivots over the years, but one of the small pivots we made was moving more and less doing ministry directly with guys and more resourcing men with, with writings and blogs and books and small groups, uh, small group um, um, video series and stuff like that. And uh, today... It's, it's amazing. We reach men all over the planet and we're mm -hmm. starting to reach men in other languages. Wow. So I, I mean, five years later, six years, it's almost been, I've been amazed at what God has done in a very short period of time because my wife made me go do something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's so good. I mean, what, tell, maybe just expand a little bit because I, I guarantee you there's a listener, Vince, there's a viewer that's a man and he's, you know, 
he's tuning in and he's feeling the stirring. God's been tugging at him and tugging at him and tugging at him. Or maybe God's been using his wife to tug at him and tug at him and tug at him, right? And he knows maybe deep down inside there's something he's supposed to go do, but whatever. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's uh, it doesn't make sense. I don't, you know, I don't feel like it. There's all kinds of reasons, right? But I know my personal experience in kind of embracing the calling that God gives you. And, and I don't know, maybe if you could share, what would you say to that man today if he was listening yeah. and watching? Yeah, <laughs> I really appreciate that you asked that because I, I get asked quite frequently, how did you go about starting this? And I know what guys are asking. They're not asking necessarily what were the mechanisms or the strategies I used. They're actually asking me, how did I get the courage to go do it? And, you know, some of it was the support I felt from my wife. You know, I, I might be stating a little bit too strong or embellishing the fact that she did actually make that statement. But <laughs> I think it, it did something in me. You know, me and my wife are very faith-filled people, and, and we are pretty adventurous, actually. But I remember looking her in the face and going, this doesn't make sense to do this. Like one of us should have a steady salary and my wife owns her own business as well. So two of us basically going into, uh, you know, a small business enterprise um, is a huge risk for our family. And, and we gave up a lot to do it. But I will tell you, I think that the one thing that many men, I think, fail to do that they should do or maybe shouldn't do is just listen to that uh, bow to the voice of apathy and indifference. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that God has a great adventure for all men. And it's not just me. Um, it's all men. But I think often we... Uh, bow to the idols of money, bow to the idols of safety, bow to the idols of security. Uh, we even bow to the idol of just simple provision. Mm -hmm. And we we bow to those idols and then forget that maybe God is calling us out on a great adventure. Of course, I think the greatest biblical example of that is Abraham, mm -hmm. <laughs> who is called to go out on a walk. And God said, I want you to go on a walk. And it's like, he didn't even tell him where. Hmm. And uh, I, I think we failed to remember that to, to be men of faith, we're going to have to take leaps of faith. And sometimes they're going to be irrational and unreasonable. And we're going to have to overcome that, that's, that quiet voice of indifference inside that says, no, this doesn't make sense. And uh, I think God calls us into that very frequently. In fact, more than we know, but we quiet it hmm. or we silence it or we stifle it or we beat it down, or we say it doesn't make rational sense. And, and I got to tell you, if, if there are men out there that want to live a great adventure. Mm, you need to start saying yes to things like deep sea diving, for example, <laughs> and you're scared to death of deep water. I mean, why not? Hmm. I mean, right. if you can learn to say yes to those adventurous moments, those small ones like that, then the big adventures won't be as scary. And so I think when men ask me, how did I do what I did when I started to resolute? Well, I went on a great adventure, and I did it with my wife and my family, no right. doubt. But, uh, you know, I prayed about it, too, and then I took the leap, and I jumped in. Yeah. And with both feet, my entire body, all in the ocean, all in the water. <laughs> and I just kept, I've kept swimming as hard as I can, hmm. trusting in God. Yeah. So. You know, it's interesting. We One of the things that we cover in our mentor and protege training is this. We, we often ask the guys after some time of reflection, but we, we, we kind of punch them in the mouth a little bit with this question of like, hey, if someone were to write a book about your life, like, would it be, would anyone want to read it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, right. seriously, would anyone want to read it? And I think we tie that into this whole concept of like, you look at the account of creation in the book of Genesis, and you look at the things that God called these uh, people to do and the things that he asked them to do and the journeys he asked them to go on. And, and there's not a single account in the word, not one that I have ever read where God has called somebody to do something and it's been easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not once, never once have I read an account of that. And now is, does God provide? And, you know, absolutely. You know, he protects and yes, but that that is something that i often have to remind myself is like this should not be easy <laughs> yeah. 
It probably will not be easy, um, but that's where I think true manhood comes out, right? And and that's yeah. in the character and the integrity and how we live that out. But I think there is a deep, deep passion inside of every man. I don't think it's just some. I think mm -hmm. inside of every man is this desire to be on an adventure um, and, and to be on this voyage that is a little bit unknown, you know, and, and to go out into the open seas and the unknown. Uh, yeah, it's scary, but... Um, I think there is that desire to, to be that man in, in a lot of us. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff, Vince. What, why do you think it's so vital for men to have, to have a mentor or for, you know, men like yourself to pour into other men? Why is that so vital? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know if you guys know John Wooden at all. I hope you do. But, mm -hmm. you know, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame twice, once as a player, once as a coach. And he used to say these simple things that made people feel stupid you know <laughs> they were they, they were actually so simple that you actually felt like an idiot when he got done talking to you but it, he would he always had this great quote which said everything i have learned i have learned from someone else mm. <laughs> really it's simple. so simple it's stupid right yeah, right and it's so true and i i think we underestimate uh, the power of learning from someone else in life. I mean, mm -hmm. it is the, the greatest and funnest way to learn. I can learn a lot of things from, I call them passive mentors and books. But when I look face to face uh, at another man who's further down the road than me, who's, who, can, who can very easily hear my life and make it better, uh, that's what God wants, mm -hmm. I think. And it's also what we need. Um, I think men avoid these relationships for fear of accountability, uh, for fear of being found out, uh, for fear of lack of chemistry, for fear of lack of wisdom, mm. uh, for fear of someone finding out their deepest, darkest sins, mm. uh, for fear of their ignorance. And uh, men need to push through that because the great adventure only begins once we sharpen iron in front of another piece of iron. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Iron that just sets rusts, but iron that rubs sharpens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we as men, we need to be sharpened on a regular basis. And the only way to do it is to bump up against another guy and allow him to make us better. And I think throughout life, we're going to have a lot of mentors and a lot of people that are going to speak into our life. We're going to have to seek them out and we're going to have to expose uh, our weaknesses and our shortcomings and our failings. And it, it makes us better. It is God's plan. That is period. There is no other way that God wants to pass on his word. Yeah, he wrote it down. He makes, he's, he's ensured that it's in print for us. But honestly, one man passing it on to another man uh, verbally through their own life is the greatest way to learn. <laughs> and, Amen. and we need to be doing more of it and frequently. Mm -hmm. And if there's guys out there that don't have a mentor in their life, they need to come running the men of iron and get themselves a mentor mm, amen, <laughs> and yeah. find someone to get forward into their life. Amen. Awesome. Well, that kind of brings me to my next point, Vince, and the kind of the, the last point that we really want to spend some time talking about. And it's the, um, you know, the announcement that I think we want, we would desire to make as, as an organization to, to our advocates and to our mentors and protégés and, and donors and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, I had read, uh, this is going on several months now, but I had read a book by uh, Chris Horst and Peter Greer called Rooting for Rivals. And it's about this idea of kind of breaking walls down between um, rival organizations, if you will, whether it be for profit, nonprofit, but, you know, somebody that's doing something similar to you. Uh, and rather than kind of arm's length, uh, you know, relationships or transactions, you, you, you do something intentional to try to work together. And so uh, I had been following you for a little while, uh, following Resolute and, you know, everything that goes about that, the morning devotions and, and all that good stuff. And I'm like, you know what, there's just something about this guy I kind of like. And again, I, I will be honest and I'm convicted to say it now because since I've reached out, it's been great, but it's one of those things where, wow, he's kind of doing what we're doing. And I don't know if I should reach out and I, I you know, well, I reached out and originally it was for a different reason, but that opened up the door to some conversations and, hey, how can we work together? How can Men of Iron and Resolute, and as we opened that door, uh, we quickly realized that, wow, th this would make sense because um, 
actually my desires for Resolute are different than your desires for Men of Iron. And it really started to make sense. And I don't know if you could just very briefly, there was something that you said in our initial conversation. And once we explain this, then we can get into the project that we're working on. But we started talking and we both started to share our experiences and what it was like to work with other organizations that are similar to us. And and neither of us have really ever had a, I don't want to, you know, but, but a super great, I don't know, experience. And so you just said, Hey, I think really the reason or what we need to aim for is if we do work together, we need to put our logos and egos aside hmm. and really talk about what's best for kingdom impact here. Hmm. And that just stuck with me. I, I remember the exact spot where I was at. I was at a sheets in Harrisburg and I was sitting in, the, in my car in a parking spot and I'm like, Holy cow, that was really good. I wrote it down. I'm like, oh, egos, <laughs> logos aside. Mm. And it just kind of went from there. But I, I don't know, Vince, if, if you could just expand on that a little bit on what your experience was prior and, and how it's been really good since we've been working together. Yeah, yeah. I First off, I'm excited about our, our partnership, where it's going and how we're trying to build the kingdom together. But I, I think us, just like any organization that's out there, today in the nonprofit space uh, lives with a lot of fear, right? A fear mm. about their own existence and preserving themselves. And I think some of that fear is healthy, but some of it is preventative. And it actually keeps the greater church and the greater kingdom from working together. And I think it's actually Satan's plan to keep us apart from one another because he knows that if we come together, the impact could be incredible. But it's going to require something of us, right? It, it requires us to lay down our logos and egos. And it, it has, there's some, at some place in the proposition, we have to decide that we want a win for something greater than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that, that's hard for a lot of people to make that decision. And it's a hard for a lot of boards to make that decision. I think it's a hard for a lot of pastors to make that decision, CEOs of nonprofits. But at, at some point, there is greater benefits in us partnering together in the reality that we can't do all things for all people. We can sure try, but if we can become specialists and work together and I can lay down some of my, uh, my strategies and you can lay down some of yours, then like the, the, the proposition of coming together around a single strategy to impact the kingdom can be great. And as you know, uh, there's a lot of small men's organizations around our country, mm -hmm. and they're all doing great work. Um, some some are struggling, of course. Some are doing better than others. But I've always had this idea in my mind that somehow that we can move men around this country if we could model what it looks like to come together. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to model it, and we're going to have to forge the way, and we're going to have to show others how to do it underneath um, maybe a bigger logo and ego. And I'm not talking about creating a new brand. I'm just talking about mm -hmm. letting God Amen. be the brand, right? Amen. And let his kingdom be the brand and do it for his sake, not our own. Mm. And it doesn't mean that we have to forfeit excellence, right? right? It doesn't mean that we have to uh, forfeit doing things well inside of our own, own organization. Amen. They're just going to be this place that we're going to say, this space right here is where we're going to work together mm. and we're going to link arms and we're going to impact the kingdom across the world. And it's, 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 it's awesome. It's amazing. It's all good stuff. And uh, I think what, what excites me the most about this whole journey was the fact that God was kind of stirring our heart um, from, from my perspective and our chairman's perspective on like, Hey, we, we need to go out and, and we need to seek out and intentionally pour into some collaborative partnerships. And I'm, I'm starting to explain this to Vince. And so the, the, really the, the whole birth of this came from our staff retreat, Steve. If you mm -hmm. remember, uh, we're on our staff retreat for years, for the last, I'd say, two years in particular, three years maybe, is we've just struggled with content and curriculum and resources. And uh, we'll write it and we'll do it. And, and, and it's just like we were hitting a wall every time. And people are like, your stuff is not very good, but you guys are good guys. And you've got good strategy, <laughs> but the stuff you're putting out is not real good. And then we get our feelings hurt a little bit. And we go back and make it better. And, and it was like on our staff retreat this past summer, 
it was like, what did, what has God called us to do guys? And, and we were reminded, Hey, God has called us to create and sustain mentorships. That's it. We, that's what he's, that's what he, that's why we exist. That, that is part of why we exist is to create and sustain one-to-one and micro group mentorships. That's it. And so in that we realize is our job as an organization is to create them. We're not content developers. We need somebody else's expertise to create the content that goes to support these mentorships. And so that was such a light bulb that went off for us. And that's what spurred this reaching out to you to say, hey, man, we really like your stuff. We want to get our eyes on some more of it. But what would this look like? And here I'm explaining this to Vince. Oh, man, we're praying through this. And Vince is kind of chuckling on the other end of the line because he's like, you have no idea I've been praying about this. In fact, mm-hmm. you, you were almost like, I've been waiting for somebody to come to me, um, another men's organization to come to me. And so I don't know if you can explain that or where you were at in that process when we, when we first mm-hmm. did reach out. But Yeah, I was, I've been in that process maybe a couple of years. I mean, I've, I've gained an understanding that really our organization is about producing materials for organizations like yourself. And uh, I've been looking for someone who's doing mentorship well. And uh, of course, I, I, I pivoted toward using language instead of discipleship, more that mentorship protege language like you guys use, uh, because I just think it's more viable and understandable language today. And I just started writing aggressively uh, mentor guides, books, small group guides, you name it. And then when we started having the conversation, I'm going, wow, I'm just now kind of really have refined the the kind of the mentorship conversation the tools and then we connect which is very exciting for me because i'm on the other end going they've got guys and we've got tools why don't we just put these two things together you Mm -hmm. know and uh and rather than just trying to run our own paths uh alongside of each other why don't we link arms and actually talk about what it means for us to bring this together. And I was like, wow, this could be the opportunity I've been praying for for a number of years. And so um, I was pumped, man. I, I tell you from day one, I was pretty excited. And But of course, you know, I will be honest too. I'm like, I'm kind of skeptical because I've heard it before, you know, and I'm like, I don't know if these guys are actually going to do this. But, but uh, then recently we um, had a more uh, current conversation, you and I, and of course your uh, board chairman and et cetera. And I was like, oh man, they're actually going to pull the trigger on it. So I told my board, of course, and you told your board. And I think we're we're excited on both sides of the equation. Yeah. So just to, to kind of give it a little bit more context for viewers and listeners that are tuning in, it's it's this idea that, you know, Men of Iron and Strong 27, we've, we've been following the 5F model. Um, it doesn't mean it's the only model out there. Um, in fact, I think Vince, you use an 8F model or I believe. And yeah, so, I, have more, I have more Fs than you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, faith, family, friends, fitness, finances. And so we wanted – the goal was to create a lot of content and, and curriculum based around these five Fs, but in, in a way that is is simple and, and yet thought-provoking and that creates conversation. No content and curriculum in my mind can sustain a mentorship. The mentorship is sustained by real life, genuine, authentic conversation, just like Vince explained earlier, this idea of iron rubbing up against iron. And and that's where transformation starts to take place. But how can we support those meetings and how can we support those mentorships in the process? So I told Vince, hey, we're kind of looking for this. He's like, hey, no problem. I've already got a ton of content. I think we can kind of customize some things for you guys. And so that's what we're doing. Vince is working uh, in the very beginning stages of creating the content um, and, and writing, and I'm, we're really excited about it. I think what's really cool to kind of keep in alignment with this collaborative partnership, uh, I was driving across the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and, and Vince and I are having this phone call, and he's going a little bit more in depth about, um, well, here are our options. These are the options that we've got, and you hire me, and you you got you own the content. I write it. You own it. You use it for yourself. I can't use it. He, and he said, I'd prefer not to go that route, but that is one option. It's probably going to be a little bit more expensive for my services with that route. And then, you know, he goes, now there's this other option is, hey, we work together. We collaborate. I write. We co-brand it. It's on a Men of Iron Guide written by Vince Miller. But here's the deal is I 
I can resolute can have access to this too, and we can use it, and, and it, because it's all, and we're like, yeah, that that's what we want. Yep. That's what we want to do, and um, so that's what we're excited to announce is this official collaborative partnership with Vince Miller and Resolute and. Vince, I want to take time to thank you and your board um, for just your openness to doing this. And uh, Vince tells me it's going to be all written by next week and published <laughs> and everything. No. <laughs> Thanks, Vince. You're uh, welcome. But we're seeing this as, as taking a, a good portion of 2019 to work through with some releases, um, you know, hopefully throughout the year. And we're super, super excited about it. And uh, I know Vince is currently working on the family section of things. And so mentors and protégés and strong 27 that are listening up you guys have something to look forward to here and um yeah vince it's been a pleasure to work with you man we're looking forward to getting our eyes on on the work yeah yeah i think you're gonna really like it i'm i actually am kind of giddy about it myself i'm i'm getting close so mm -hmm. sometime this month you're gonna see something from me and That's i awesome. think you're gonna really be pumped about how it looks and what guys are going to use it to do awesome well vince we want to we want to honor your time and just say thank you for joining us and uh, we're going to wrap up here, man, but we're, we're super excited about our partnership and we love what you're doing with Resolute. We're in your corner. And uh, I, I believe I was just telling this to uh, somebody the other day. I said, I, I just have a feeling that this is just the very beginning uh, yeah. of something really, really big for the kingdom yeah. with, with Men of Iron and Resolute. And, and um, we need to get you into Pennsylvania and uh, get you some warmer yeah. weather. So we're going to make that happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere is warmer than Minnesota. Yeah. If I could get my skin from pasty white to just a little pink, it would be great. There you go. Well, Vince, if you could just real quick tell guys how they can get connected to Resolute, they can go to beresolute.org and there's the men's daily Devo they can sign up for. And anything else you want to let the listeners know about? Yeah, that's it, man. Just let's let's uh, forge some, let's get some materials to these guys Amen. and get them building some relationships and connecting. And so. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for your relationship and so much for just keep, tell all the guys to pray for the future. Mm. You know? Amen. Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to pray and uh, certainly appreciate everything you're doing, Vince. And we will talk with you soon, man. Thanks, okay. Vince. Thank you. Take care. All right, man. That was good stuff. Yeah. Vince is the real deal. Yeah. He should probably join our board or something someday. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Yeah. Well, gee, we got the Ohio launch coming up on February 2nd at the One Center in Canton, Ohio. That's exciting stuff. Man. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I'm like trying to understand how to survive in the first quarter of 2019, but we're going to make it happen. And yeah. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to being at the One Center, BZ, Brian Ziegler, new office yeah. space out there, new, um, new collaborative partnership with... The one center, yep. looking forward to having close to, I think, 150, 200 yeah. guys out there for a training in February. So, Yeah, that's incredible. Our new uh, Ohio headquarters are in the one center in Canton. So any guys listening in the Northeast Ohio area, if you're interested, contact our state director out there, Brian Ziegler. Brian at menofiron.org, and he'll get you plugged in. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for listening to episode 21. If you want to find out more information about Men of Iron, go to menofiron.org. You can check out the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. We are out there. We're on video version on Facebook and YouTube, so check it out. Leave a comment. It's Men of Iron in the phone book, too. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Definitely in there. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right. See you.